welcome back to Cash Fish Not Feelings. I'm recording this intro in the car just because it's so dark outside right now. And the lighting right here isn't that good either, but it's the best I could do. But I'm out here with my buddy Tim. We're gonna go for a night dive real quick off the shore. We're, our goal is to catch some, maybe some croakers, look for some halibuts maybe if they're out there. It's pretty cold right now, it's November, so the water is kind of chilly. It's an incoming high tide. Low tide was maybe at 4.30, which was an hour and a half ago. High tide is at around 10.30 or 11. So it's going to be a slow tidal change. It's not going to be that great out there, I think, but I don't know. We haven't been in the water in a while, so we've been itching to get our like ears wet. But I'll go over my gear, what I'm using today, and I'll see you guys in the water. So this is pretty much our gear. We got the wetsuits, of course, to keep us warm fins to dive around and swim around. I'm using a short 50 centimeter gun right now. From my experience at night and in the surf it gets a little murky sometimes and it's hard to see far. So with a shorter gun you have the advantage that it's easier to maneuver around and it's easier to see the tip of the gun. But this is what I'm using for today. So we are in the water. As expected, the water was kind of chilly, but the visibility was pretty decent. Our target were croakers, corvinas, and halibuts, you know, your typical fishes in the surf. But we actually hardly saw any croakers. And I'm thinking that maybe it's a little too cold right now during November. But nonetheless, we did see plenty of life around this nice little reef we found. So here, I'm diving around, I'm looking around, and I see two big eyes, and that's the California spiny lobster. Just by looking at it from the top, I knew it was really big, and I just couldn't believe my eyes. So you can kind of see me drop my gun down. I was kind of worried the gun might scare away the lobster, but I think that may have made it curious, because I was patient enough where while I waited, she eventually got curious and she started walking out of her little cave and that's when I grabbed her. And you can just hear how excited I was. I'm just cursing because I just couldn't believe what I caught. Fuck dude, look! Oh shit! Oh my god, dude, I saw him. He's strong, dude. Holy crap! Can I put him in your <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't expecting to catch one. Oh, this shit. Man, Damn, should... that's a fat dude. one. Dude, yeah, that was dude. Oh my god. Another really cool catch for me was the California scorpion fish, aka the sculpin. You can see here it's trying to camouflage on the rocks and it does a pretty good job of doing so. But what gave it away was its dorsal fins, how it had it poking up like that. And that's just the defense mechanism these fishes have, because their spines do have a lot of venom in them. But I landed a really nice shot, and it actually tried to wedge itself between some rocks. And you can kind of see me having trouble pulling the spear out, but eventually the fish tried to make a swim for it, and I managed to get him out with the rocks. So I find it really cool that a lot of fishes have different types of defense mechanisms. So the sculpin has its venomous spines as a defense mechanism. But you can see here that another defense mechanism is these fishes actually throw up 
their stomach content. So they're pretty much vomiting. And what this does is, this is to distract predators, to give them a chance to run away. And it's them hoping that the predators will be more focused on their throw up than actually the fish itself. So you can kind of see this fish doing it here, but obviously it doesn't work on humans most of the time, I think. But this was a really cool fish for me to catch, a first time sculpting for me. It was a fairly short dive. We didn't see anything too big, just some sand basses that were maybe barely legal and a lot of small sculpins. But it was a really short dive. We were in the water for maybe about an hour and we caught it a day because we were just kind of tired because this was right after work and everything. But I came home with two catches, which is pretty nice. Fortunately, Tim missed all his shots tonight, but hopefully next time we'll do better. But a nice dive and we explored a new spot, found some new things and it was pretty cool. Good night today, a little short, maybe one hour dive session. Got myself a nice, maybe like 15, 16 inch scope pin. It's pretty heavy. Got myself this lobster though. Was not expecting to find this. But nice old female. About like maybe two pounds. Pretty heavy. Let's go. <laughs> you look at the scope pin. Someone actually caught him on a fishing line. The hook is still inside. But yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Good night. Really a nice haul. We were going for croakers and halibut, but instead we found a lobster and a sculpin. Let's go. Bill's ability was pretty good out there, surprisingly. Alright, so taking a closer look at our catches for tonight, we first off we got the California sculpin aka the scorpion fish these guys got a big mouth to crush crabs and whatnot big thick head with a lot of spikes on them and these guys are famous for their dorsal fins so getting pricked by these feels like a bee sting and it really really hurts so you do want to be really careful when you're handling these fishes even if they're dead if you get pricked by this you're gonna be in a lot of pain but I measured them out, turned out to be 13 inches, one and a half pounds. Really nice size fish. But it was super, it was a super big pain to just handle in the water. Once I shot it, I honestly didn't know where I was gonna put it. But it was a decent sized fish, so it's pretty much worth it. Got big eyes. That's how you know they're hunters. Big eyes to ambush their predators. But in the water, he was red. He was uh, camouflaged with the rocks. But those are pretty patterns on its fins. So someone actually hooked onto him and he broke them off. And that's why he has a fishing line in here. But I shot him right through the cheeks, right here, through under its gills somewhere and he wasn't going anywhere you can just see how big the head is compared to the body so when it comes to prepping these guys again you want to be careful with these spines and you can just get scissors and cut them right off and you're good to go but it, take my advice don't get pricked by this it really really hurts Next off, we got the California spiny lobster. So unlike the traditional lobsters you see, these guys don't have spines on them, or they don't have claws on them, I mean. But they got all these spines on their antennas, some on their backs, and this is why they're called spiny lobster. And it's more of a defense mechanism when something tries to eat it, they'll get poked by these spines. But these dots right here are its fake eyes. In the water, those look like they're real eyes and that's just a distraction for predators. 
but their real eyes are right here. It's a nice big one. I weighed her out. She was three pounds. Nice big old tail. It's gonna be really good to eat. I'm not sure if I'm gonna cook it in this video, but we'll see. But this was not what I was expecting to catch at all. And she's going crazy. <laughs> but we're gonna put her in the freezer and we're gonna prep her up next time. This is uh, gonna be a really good meal to eat. But look at all those spines.